Thanks for watching today's video. Today we are going to talk about the future of COVID-19. As we know, some countries who went into lockdown to stop the spread of infection um, are relying on a vaccine uh, to be developed in a few months or a year or so to stop reoccurrence of this disease. Other countries like Sweden, South Korea, Taiwan, etc., who went into much softer lockdown, they were relying on spread of the disease or a slow spread of disease in the population. So many people get immunized against the disease. So they develop the infection, get immunized, and hence develop herd immunity. So let's talk about vaccination first. So we are talking about vaccination against SARS-CoV-2, which causes uh, COVID-19, so the current infection that we have. Now, historically speaking, there are lots of coronaviruses which have infected people, human beings in the past, and they still do. And some of them are called alpha coronaviruses. There are a few of them. Uh, beta coronaviruses, then again, few of them. And about a couple of decades ago, we had a SARS-1 epidemic uh, or even a pandemic. And we had a MERS uh, uh, epidemic and pandemic about five or six years ago. Till date, none of these coronaviruses have got any vaccines against them. So what is the chance of getting a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2? I presume the reason they don't have a vaccine against these coronaviruses is because these viruses are very difficult to create a vaccine against. We know there are lots of uh, uh, viral infections like uh, HIV, a human immunodeficiency virus, and we have uh, no vaccine to stop AIDS happening till date, and HIV been around for almost four decades now. So. Uh, the chance of developing SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, I think, uh, historically looking, seems to be very low. However, the last major epidemic we had was about 20 years ago, 18 years ago, with SARS-1. MERS was about 5-6 years ago. So maybe technology is a wee bit better now than it was 5-6 or six years ago. Uh, then again, none of these viruses had such a huge impact as uh, COVID-19 had on the world. So the investment gone into the creation of vaccine for this virus uh, is hopefully going to be much more as compared to that was put into creating a vaccine against all these viruses put together. So maybe there is a possibility of getting a vaccine, but historically speaking, I think the possibility is very small. Second thing to talk about is herd immunity. Now countries like Sweden, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, etc., who went into soft lockdown, their intention was to get herd immunity. Now, first thing to understand what herd immunity is. So we have different types of people in our population. So where I live in, this, in the town, there will be three different types of people. Some are drawn in blue, some are in green, and some are in red. So blue are the ones who actually have the disease at the moment, and they are active disease and they are transmitting the disease to other people. So disease can travel from a blue person. Green people are the people who have no disease, never had an infection, these are normal people, and never developed immunity because they never developed infection. Red people are the one who had infection in the past, maybe just a mild infection, they never had symptoms, or maybe a bit more severe infection, but they have developed immunity or antibodies in their blood or in the tissues where the infection goes in to stop the infection, making them worse again. So let's look at the people, the blue people, who actually have the disease. So when they cough, they sneeze, you get close to their mouth or their nose or whatever, you have a risk of developing infection from these blue people. So this blue person, would, the virus will travel from this blue person to this green person because this green person has got no immunity and had no disease in the past. This blue person will infect to here, 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 or whatever way. But when this disease from this blue person wants to travel and go past, lower down, it stops here because this person comes across a patient who already had infection and now got antibodies to stop the virus from attacking this person, getting infected again, and stopping the virus going any further. This person again cannot spread the disease any further because one they come close to, 
this person cannot get infected because already had an infection and have got immunity antibodies which will kill the virus. This person again can infect this one and the disease can go further down. If we come into the next line, there are more red people over here. So more people who have got immunity or antibodies in their blood or in their tissues to stop the virus getting any further. So as you can see, this person can infect this person because once he gets infected, he can transmit the disease to this person and this person to the next, next person they come across. Similarly, this person gets infected from here to here, here, and then this person gets infected. But here, there is a barrier of people who already had an infection, now got antibodies, and these people cannot transmit infection any further because these are the people who are blocking the virus. So they are killing the virus. Their body is killing the virus. So this person, when they get infected from the blue one, they cannot transmit the disease any further. So disease stops over here. So they have to have one or two people in the community having immunity makes very little difference to the spread of infection. Infection will spread from people who do not have immunity as yet. We need a substantial number of people in the population to stop the virus spreading. And that is the principle of herd immunity. So if you pick up a few countries, and I picked up just randomly one, two, three, four countries, USA, UK, Sweden, and Germany. Uh, Germany, we know, did very, very well. Uh, from COVID-19, uh, controlled it very well. The death rate was very, very good. Sweden went to soft lockdown. Uh, quite a few deaths in the elderly population, but that's been the case in every country in the world anyway. And the frail and the elderly are the ones who got affected by this virus most. USA, UK, USA just gone past 100,000 deaths in their country. UK is, I think, about 38,000 at the moment. Now, if you look at different uh, way of calculating how many uh, people are generally infected in the population, it varies from model to model. Now, if you look at it from the death rate, try and make a model out of a percent out of how many people in the general population already had an infection, whether it was a very, very mild infection with no symptoms at all or a very severe infection. And we are presuming they've got antibodies. We don't know everyone develops antibodies or not, how long do the antibodies last for, and whether immunity is short term or long term, is a complete immunity, incomplete immunity. There's so many questions which are not answered as yet because scientists are still trying to work on it, still trying to do population-based studies. But if we presume the death rate from COVID-19 is quite low, is 0.2 to 0.3 percent, then the infection rate in USA in the general population will be about between 8 and 10 percent. In UK, a bit higher, about 16 odd percent. Uh, in Sweden, uh, it comes at about 12 and a half or 13, 14 percent from death rate. However, Sweden are saying that they have seen immunity in up to some places like Stockholm, which are very densely packed between 20 and 25 percent. Germany is very, very low, is about 4 percent or maybe a bit more now. However, the important thing to look at is uh, the population, different parts of the country are different. So USA, New York is very densely populated, younger people, etc. In UK, big cities like London, Birmingham, Manchester, very densely populated, big cities, Sweden, Stockholm, Germany, uh, Berlin, uh, other places which are bigger, denser cities. So the immunity in those places, in the community, or the infection in those bigger cities where more people are living, the infection rate will be higher as compared to rural areas because disease does not spread so much over there. Now, I was looking at a, a population model of Germany and um, somebody was saying the amount of people or the number of people you require in the community in the general population to have immunity would be about 60% to have an effective herd immunity, 60%, 60%. At the moment, it's about under 10% or maybe 5 6% at the moment, whichever model you look at. So they are way away from herd immunity at the moment. Um, Sweden, even Sweden, 
if we say the herd immunity will be at around 60 or 70 percent of the general population they're still way away from herd immunity uk again way way off herd immunity usa the same obviously some places in usa uk sweden germany where there is higher herd hard number of infection the chances of getting herd immunity will be higher as compared to uh, rural areas where the population is very very thin now will this percent increase um, at the moment the virus is very dormant because summer is here and most coronaviruses calm down in summer they re-emerge or de reactivate in um, autumn and, and winter time so at the moment if our R0 figure is very very low say 0.5 or less than 1 then the chances of this going up in the next three months is very very small um, not significantly anyway from 8% it might go to 15% in the next three months because the virus has already been in these countries since January this year and we are uh, 1st of June tomorrow so the ch chances of the herd immunity developing in any of these countries as a matter of fact in any country in the world is extremely slim so what is the possibility of getting a second peak in uh, autumn or winter now this is my my feeling and i might be totally wrong only time will tell and we will know by early next year whether my prediction is right or wrong everyone is predicting at the moment um, and it's only prediction by anyone there is no science behind this uh, i think we will get a very very small peak in autumn and winter and early next year when it's still cold in certain parts of the world where dense population is there, younger people or uh, people are densely packed, but I think the peak will be very, very small. The reason I say that is because um, people who will be affected most, again, will be elderly and uh, the frail. And I'm hoping um, we have learned our lessons from this current problem and hopefully we will be more prepared to protect those vulnerable people a bit more than we were on this occasion. And if that is the case, um, then, and also the virus has taken its toll. A virus has killed people that it could on this occasion. And I think there are very, very few people left for it to take uh, its effect on. Uh, so that is my feeling how the future is going to be for COVID-19. Um, I... I will know and you will know as well whether a vaccine comes in six months or a year or so. As I said, chances are very small. If I'm wrong, please write on the comments in a few months' time that I was wrong. And I hope I'm wrong um, because lots depends on the vaccine, like worldwide travel, tourism, etc. Lots of things depends on the vaccine. Herd immunity, we will know by winter, so it's not that far away in six months' time, whether we get a second huge peak or not. As I said, again predicted now, the huge peak eh, will not happen. I think the peak will be very, very small and that will be limited to elderly and the frail. And I hope we can protect them. Before we go and I finish this video, i just like to ask uh, some of you a question which I do not know the answer to. You know, we all talk about um, social distancing of two meters, which is about six foot, a few inches. What happens to the virus after two meters. Where did this figure of two meters come from? Has there been a study or a big trial or something to say there is a shield beyond which the virus can't go at two meters? Um, so if I sneeze and cough, I got the infection and I can't transmit it beyond two meters. What happens after the virus drops dead? The virus disintegrates or what happens at two meters? Why not five foot nine inches, which is just two inches less than two meters? Why Two meters, why not two meters and one foot? So that's a question to all of you. If you any of you know the answer, then please kindly let me know and I'll be delighted to know. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the very best.